Okay, hi, well, I'm joined now by Professor Mike Lockwood from the University of Southampton and the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. Um, he's been talking here today, giving his own analysis of the current lack of solar activity and putting it into a more historical context. Um, Professor Lockwood, what, what kind of context did you put it into? Well, the point really is, is that since we've had high resolution measurements from space, we happen to have been in a grand solar maximum estimates vary but it's like something of the region of 10% of the time so we've been in the top 10% of solar activity on millennial time scales um, we know this from cosmic ray products cosmogenic isotopes buried in ice sheets and tree trunks things like that and we know that we've been in the top 10% and really what this minimum is is really a symptom that we are falling out of that um, maximum and uh, we've done a bit of work the Swiss have done a bit of work and we can't from completely different angles, we're coming to the conclusion that the present grand maximum in solar activity will come to end within the next 10 years, roughly speaking, and, and with some uncertainty. But we do agree quite closely on, what the, on that. And so although this is low activity, very low compared to anything we've ever seen since we've had decent measurements from space, it's actually the natural way of the sun and we're moving into a, into a more quiescent, more normal period of solar activity. I see. Can you explain what the difference is between a normal solar maximum on the 11 year cycle and what the grand maximum is? Well grand maxima take place on long time scales so you see grand maxima if you average, of, average out the solar cycle which is an 11 year ripple and look at the underlying average values um, and, and so essentially these last for you know, typically 100 years, maybe 50 to 100 years. So one of the grand maxima, well, the present one has lasted for uh, something like um, uh, 80 years, I'd say. Um, a grand minimum would be something like the Maunder minimum, which lasted for most of the second half of the 17th century, about 1650 to 1700. So these are cycles that come and go periodicity hundreds of years, and the minima or oh, the maximum can last typically a hundred years. So the much longer time scale cycle. It seems ironic to be talking about this on such a gloriously sunny day, but should we be worried about um, dropping out of the grand maxima? Um, in some ways yes, in some ways no. And um, the yes part of that relates to high-tech systems, so maybe I can come back to that. The no part relates almost certainly to global warming. Um, we are seeing as part of this decrease the lowest values of the brightness of the sun, the power we receive per unit area from the sun, is at an all-time low since records began. Um, that's a great phrase, since records began. In this case it means about 1977 when we put up accurate radiometers in space to measure this. But um, it's still lower than we've seen before. But the drop since previous solar minima is something like a few hundredths of 1%, so very small. So actually, in terms of this being the cavalry coming to save us from man-made uh, greenhouse grass trapping, warming, um, I'm afraid it's very small. So I, I'd like to say otherwise. It would be great if the sun could help us out here, but. I'd that's not what's happening um, and for example the changes that we get out of Earth's orbit around the Sun are much much larger and of course they have huge effects on the climate not only the total amount of power we receive but actually more importantly the the pattern of insulation over the planet and that that's what drives ice ages and things but they're much bigger changes than than these changes in the uh, emissivity of the Sun that we're talking about at the moment now, let me come back to the, uh, I said yes and no. The yes part is really interesting. This is to do with the space weather aspects of the sun. Now, although lower activity means on average, those effects will get smaller on average. So lower solar activity does mean fewer solar storms, few, less disruption of communications, less satellite damage, all the things that go with an active sun, except there is growing evidence that the really big events take place at average activity levels. Um, it's a rather like a, I, I talk about people who lose their temper a lot. If you lose your temper a lot, you never get really, really angry because you're doing it all the time. Um, whereas if you actually store something up, 
Um, when you do lose your temper, you tend to lose it big time. And that seems to be the case with the sun, that at middle activity levels, when it has a big event, it seems to be at average uh, at general activity levels. Maybe it just doesn't release the, the built up tension, which is going to be a magnetic tension of some sort. Um, and it has to do it in a rather explosive way. I say this because all the really large flares that we know about from ice sheet records and things, from nitrates in ice sheets, they all turn up at middle levels of solar activity, of this long-term variation of the sun. And a good example is the biggest flare we know about is the 1859 one that started it all off, the one that was noticed by Richard Carrington. And that actually is the biggest event that we know of in the last thousand years. And it was at very average levels of solar activity. Not more than a minimum, but not like the current maximum. And so we do think that there is a very real chance that actually the super large events may become more likely because of this change. And it's really the super large events you worry about. In the insurance business, you worry about coordinated failures. And the thing about a really large Carrington scale flare is that it could knock out a lot of satellites. It could cause a lot of power distribution systems, not just Canada, but all around the world. And then when you have coordinated failures like that, that's very serious. That, that could be exactly the scenario that you don't want. So that's why I say yes and no. Don't worry about it from the point of view about this being the start of the next ice age. But actually we should worry about our immunity to solar effects on, on satellite systems, on power distribution systems and the like. Okay, well it looks like we have to keep our eye on the sun for some time to come. Professor Lockwood, thank you very much. You need to watch it for sure. Thank you. Thank you.